Hello there, this is Dave Allen with Good and Geeky and I want to make a video about how to use Craft as a journaling application. Now, I have to say first of all that I am a user of the Day One journaling software, which is the best journaling software available for the Mac and iOS. I've been using it for more than nine years now, so I know what's required of an application for good journaling. There are features within the application which would mean I'd be unlikely to change to using Graph, but you never know. There could come a time when one day I need to reduce the amount of subscriptions I have and I want to save some money. And I could start using Craft instead because I'm using Craft for other purposes, you know, my note taking and so on. I saw on the Craft forum someone was asking how to use Craft for journaling, so I thought it'd be interesting to see how it could be done. Craft is excellent software and would make a great platform for your journaling activities. This is because you have the ability to create good looking text based journals with photos in there and it's possible to add sketches and you can add audio by adding audio files. You don't get the audio recording as you do with day one but at least you can add audio in there and you can also drop links in there to videos that you've got on your uh, computer as well. And within the craft you have all of the organisational possibilities to make sure that your journal is accessible and you can find the information later when you need to have a look and see what's been going on in your life. The organisational features within craft give you a number of options and I'll show you in the video a couple of ways to arrange your daily journal posts. One way is to use folders and subfolders. Now here I've got a journal folder I've got folders in this for 2020 and for 2021. And then within these folders, we've got two different ways of organising this. In the 2020 folder, I've used sub-documents straight away. And in 2021, I've used further sub-folders. So this April, May, June and July here, with the 040506 and 07 in front of them, they're all sub-folders. So if I want to go into... April for 2021, I can double click on that and I can go and have a look at what uh, journal entries I've made for this year. So one way is to use folders and subfolders, have a folder for the year inside a journal folder, then put subfolders inside for each month. Within the subfolder for each month, you have a couple of ways of creating your journal. It could be done by having one document for the whole of the month, although if you did, you wouldn't need the subfolders per month. Within the document, whether it is per month or per day, you can have multiple posts. I often write more than one journal entry per day, so that's a, a possibility. You want to decide how accessible your content is within Craft. There are two ways to create entries. And the first way would be to use the ampersand and then to say what the entry is going to be. So let's say it's going to be the 27th of the month and this I'm going to use the 2021-04- let's say 27 and then it's given me the option to create this document. So there's nothing going to be in that document until I go to this button here create content or if I click off it and then I click back on it like that I can go in there and then I can start creating this document. And within this document I can have uh, various sort of um, things in there so if I want to have a cover image I can do that. I can drag and drop a picture into there. I can show the title or not show the title. I think it's probably better to show the title in that one there. Um, another possibility if I want a different sort of title in there, if I want to go for a date in a different format, if I go for the forward slash and then go for date and time and then I can put today's date in there or whatever else. So that's another way to have that there and then I want to set that in the style to be a title. So that's another way of having a title there and have it in a different format. So that's one possibility. And then after you've um, got that bit in there, then you can go on to the next bit there where you start putting the details of your day in there. That's, an, that's one way of making your uh, entry for the day. And obviously you can use uh, photographs in there. So let's go for uh, photos. You can drag them, drop them in out of Finder. Or what you can do is you can go to uh, your Photos app and drag a picture in and obviously you can have more than one picture in there if you want to so um, say if I'm using this picture instead and I want to have uh, two pictures in there that's possible and it'll arrange themselves within the uh, document here 
And the way that they get arranged will depend upon how the um, styling for the page is set up. So maybe you want it in classic, maybe you want it wide. Sometimes it does make an awful lot of difference, but at least you get the pictures in there and you can do what you want with them. So that's a block of uh, text there for that. Um, say if you've got some files that you want to put in there, so if you go to Finder, bring Finder over here so you can have a look at it. You can put audio in there, so let's just grab a bit of audio, drag it and drop it in there. So that's how you get audio in there, so if I want to play that, I can, I can do. If you're on your iPad, what you can do is you can create a sketch and you can draw with your Apple Pencil so that you can create drawings and diagrams and scribbled things, whatever else you want to do in there with the um, uh, Apple uh, Pencil. And then you've got your actions where you can move these things up and down if you want to. So if I want to move that down, I can put it there so it's underneath and have it in between the two photos. Move it back up again, I can move it to the top or move it to the bottom. Lots of ways of setting it all up. So making your journal entries pretty is definitely possible within Craft. Another way to create entries from our sort of main documents here, which is our links through to the rest of April, would be to put the date in there. So for the moment what I'll do is I'll just put a date in there. And let's just say it's going to be today. And it can do it like that. And what I can do with this here is I can click on the Add Content. Now the difference with this is, is that when you make your uh, stuff here, so you put your detail in there and you put your pictures in there and whatever else, this is actually a sub document within the original document. So you can see here, it's not a document by itself. So I can go back into this one here and you can see that the way that this looks here. This doesn't have its own sort of document within the craft thing. So for instance, if I go into all documents here, I'm not going to see what I've just created in this whole sort of uh, lot of documents within craft. Okay, so it seems a little bit confusing, but it's not really. It's just that there's two different ways of creating sub documents within your craft documents. And it's sort of going to affect on how visible they are within the, the system that you create for creating your journal. Another difference is that is with this document here, it was created separate within the craft document, but it didn't put it into this folder here. What it did is put it into the inbox. So what I'd need to do after that is I'd need to grab this and drag it and drop it into the right folder. So now it's going to be in with that April. So that, that one I just created, it's in there. So you have to remember that if you create it in that first one I showed you, that it's going to be put into the inbox and then you'll have to move it into the right folder afterwards. Now it's quite important with your journaling activities to get the look right. And with this here, you can look at it in this way with the list view. You've also got this layout view here. And within this layout view, you can see that some of these here, like we've got pictures in there. So this picture here, look, that is from Unsplash. And it's just there just to make that day look different. So it's easier to find at a later stage. Maybe you'll have something in there that means more to uh, whatever it is that the uh, journal entry is about. I've used emoji icons for the folders. So if I do edit, see I've used this uh, emoji icon here. So it's been, it's quite, uh, makes sense to use one with a mask on there, <laughs> an emoji with a mask. Okay, so that's my emoji icon there. Okay, so that's how you get emoji icons into this bit here. So there's a couple of different possibilities there. You've got those uh, small selection of icons that you can use for your folders, or you can use the emojis and uh, whichever makes it look nice for you. Okay, so the layout view, we've got that layout view there, which is dynamic. Or we've got the one where we just have it in all sort of these uh, rectangular tiles. And it's, uh, it doesn't show you so much, but it shows you enough that you can recognise which day you want to get into and see your stuff. Now, the thing with the journal is that it's private. It's not something that you're putting out onto a social media or wherever else. And you're going to put all sorts of stuff in there. And it could be personal and secret and stuff you don't want other people to see. Now with this journal within Craft, I think it's fairly safe to say that the information is staying here on your computer and doesn't go off to the Craft server. But if you decide that you're going to do some synchronization and you want to have the same information on your iPad, your iPhone, your iMac, whatever else, then that information is going to go off to the cloud and then it's go back off to the other devices. So there's going to be synchronization and there's a possibility that that information could end up being on a server or 
it's going to be sort of as it's moving around it could be sort of uh, attacked by a man in the middle sort of thing so really what we want to do is we want to put some private information in there um, and we want to make sure it's going to be safe so let's look at how we can do that one way to do that would be to use an application like um, Encrypto. I like Encrypto, it's a good little application. And with that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Finder, into Documents, and say we want to put this file here into our journal, and it's text that we want to keep safe and not have any prying eyes on it. Just going to drag that and drop that into there. Got a password in there. So for the moment, I'll just do 000, just because it's... Um, just to show you how I'm doing this here, you put a password in here, that's going to be a good password, a long password, and also put that password into one password and keep it safe so that you can get to it and remember it using software. Uh, one password is really good, you could use LastPass, just have it somewhere so that you're not going to forget it, because obviously if you lose the password, you're not going to see that data again. Let's hide that. So I'm going to encrypt that, and then I can do Save As. Let's do Save As. And I'm going to put that onto the desktop and click on save. Okay, so that's a file encrypted with Encrypto. Now I'll go back to uh, this one here. What I want to do is I want to get that file and I want to put it into my journal. And there it is. So this file now is encrypted and it's not going to be seen by anybody else apart from me. Another way to do this here is if you want to just encrypt some text is to take this text here and copy it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Paranoia Text Encryption. This is a really good application, I love this application, I think it's great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all set the um, password for this and just for this example I'm going to use the same password as I used before, 000. What you do is you paste in your text into this bit here and then you click on Encrypt and for this it's going to use AES 256-bit encryption. I could change that to something else, have it more um, secure if I want to, but 256-bit is fine. And then what I do is I'm going to select that. I'm going to select all of it, and then I'm going to do copy. Then go back into um, craft, where my information is there. It's still select all that I want to... Um, Encrypt and do paste. Okay, so that's the text encrypted. And then if I want to go back into that again, all I've got to do is to select that and go back into Paranoia Text Encryption to change it back to the way it was. In fact, I'll just show you how to do that. Let's go back to this one here. Let's um, clear that. And in Craft, what you do is you'd select that. So I did a triple click on that to select all of it, do Command and C, go back into this one here, go to this one at the bottom here, paste that in there and click on Decrypt after putting in the uh, password, same as I had it before, and it uh, brings out the information there for me to read. So that's privacy concerns taken care of if you're using Craft as your journal. Craft is a really good application. I really like it. It's something that's got multiple uses. You can use it for note taking. You can use it for collections of information. Thanks for checking this video on how to use Craft for your journaling activities. If you've enjoyed this video, found some information in there that's been useful to you, then click on the like button and also subscribe and click the little bell thing as well so that anytime I make a new tutorial video, you'll find it in your feed. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Now talk to you again soon.